I'm Faith and uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 26 years old. Um, at that point in time it was a complete shock and I did every form of treatment from chemo, radiation, a mastectomy um, and quite a few reconstructive surgeries. Um, I think I'm I just had surgery number 12 um, and it's been over the past uh, 15 years that I've been battling cancer on and off. Um, in 2008, I was given a stage four diagnosis of metastatic breast cancer um, that had spread from my breast to my lymph nodes um, and then to my bones. So um, I actually fractured my spine and uh, that's how I found out that I had stage four cancer. So um, fast forward almost 12 years now, I've been living with it um, and slowly over time I was in a strong remission um, but it's now moved to my lungs um, as well as um, uh, my liver. It's been a really tough battle but I try to stay positive and make sure that I use my journey to help others and I feel like that really keeps me going. Um, and. You know, I'm a singer-songwriter, so it also gives me purpose as far as my music. I'm able to write about what I've been through on my cancer journey, and I know that it, you know, touches a lot of people, motivates a lot of people to, to keep fighting, and that means a lot to me. So a lot of things have happened on my journey. Some days are really tough. Some are better. Um, sometimes I feel like the biggest trials are a blessing in disguise. Um, but sometimes I'm just tired and sometimes I, you know, I sit and think about all the friends that I've lost, um, you know, friends and family that I've lost to cancer. And uh, I know pretty much everybody is touched by it in some type of way these days. So um, that saddens me. Um, it's nice for me to be able to say, okay, yes, I've, you know, defied the odds and uh, look at this is where I am now, you know, because I have defied the odds um, Survival for people with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer is an average of two to three years and I'm going on 12 years So for me, um, I know I've defied the odds But you know, it would be so nice to hear that that's the norm for people to survive so many years and um, keep going so at this point in time, um, just a little update, I saw my oncologist and um, this was last week and basically I've been going through every different hormone therapy that's available to me and I'm kind of running out of options. Um, I was told that, you know, she strongly suggests IV chemo and um, there's so much cancer in my, my liver at this point that... Um, my oncologist is saying if I don't do IV chemo um, in the next six months, my liver will start to shut down. So that's very scary and uh, it's given me a bit of a kick in the butt to start doing a lot of the natural things that I've been doing over the years that have kind of fallen to, you know, the, the end of the priority list and, um, you know, I have to put myself first. I have to... Um, come up with a new game plan. So my game plan is for me to, um, I'm, I'm on um, a hormone therapy that is, it's called Megase and it's one of the older ones from like 20 years ago that was used and it's not used as much these days, but um, that doesn't mean it won't work for me. So I'm on that. I'm going to up all my natural stuff. I'm going to um, incorporate some some herbs. I've been talking with a botanist and also um, some sea moss from someone else that um, that makes it and I know there's a lot of success with that. So I'm going to do as many natural things as I can. Give myself two months and um, after a scan in two months then I'll have to make you know some some tough decisions because I have said for a very long time that I won't do IV chemo again. Um, I have my reasons and they're not um, what people might think they might be. I'm not afraid of losing my hair. It's only hair, it grows back. I've lost my hair before. Um, you know, I've dealt with side effects and I know what it's like to be nauseous every day. So, you know, it's not that either. I just know that um, I've seen the harm that it can do to people's bodies. Yes, chemo 
does kill some cancer cells, but it also kills healthy cells. So, you know, everybody's choices that they make, like they're on their own path. I, I respect everybody's choices. Um, but for me personally, that's where I've been at. And I've been saying this for a long time, but you know, as fear starts to really kick in, it's like, okay, you know, I have some friends that'll be like, you know, do what you do, what you want to do, do, do what's best for you. Um, <clears throat> you know, other friends that are like, you know, they strongly believe in the, the natural stuff and don't let the fear get to you and don't, you know, don't go that route with, with chemo again because you're scared. And then I have other friends that are saying, well, you have to do the chemo, you have to do chemo. You know, you have to give yourself that shot. So, um, in the end, it really is my decision. Uh, I value everybody's input, but, um, you know, um, at least this gives me a couple months to kind of feel like I'm in control. I want to buy a juicer and start doing other, you know, really stepping up what I've done in the past and adding some new things. Um, maybe shock my system a little bit. And uh, so I'll keep you guys updated. I just wanted to uh, do a little bit of an update just to let you know what's been going on with me. Um, sometimes it takes some time to really process it and uh, feel like I'm ready to share, you know, beyond my closest friends and family. Um, but when the time comes that I'm able to actually say what's on my mind and process it, I think it's important to put it out there because I want people to see what it's like to live with metastatic breast cancer. Um, some of the tough choices that we have to make, you know, um, I value a lot of things. One of the things I've really valued is um, getting away. You know, at least once a year, going somewhere on vacation and just feeling like, okay, I, you know, I need a restart button, refresh, and uh, Sometimes it actually, um, it, it's always amazing, but in the end, I actually really end up paying for it. So I feel like, you know, I just took a vacation and now my body's really paying for it. So that's the other thing that I, I would say is that um, because of the treatment I was on, as well as just being in the heat, um, I had blisters like the size of quarters on the bottom of my toes and lost probably at least 10 layers of skin. I had to go to the doctor and have that trimmed off then I came back I had swelling in my ankle and my arm so they thought I might have a blood clot so I had to go for testing for that and that turned out fine which is great um, and then just just being tired and recovering from you know the 12 hour um, the 12 hours that it really takes to, to travel from one place to another from my front door type of thing um, so I definitely feel like I'm so lucky to get to be able to have that experience and see new places and do new things but right now my body's kind of paying for that um, my breathing has been a little bit better actually um, <clears throat> I was getting to the point where like every three weeks I was having about a liter and a half of fluid drain from my around my right lung um, but then it got kind of scary because the last time I only lasted like a week and that same amount had built up. So what the doctors are really pushing for is for me to get a catheter put in my lung where I'll have to have it drained every day or every day or two, um, which I don't really want something else attached to my body. But um, the alternative is they've been doing thoracentesis. So basically I go to the hospital, I get blood work done, I go get a... Um, an x-ray and then they do an ultrasound to see how much fluids in there and then they put a needle in my lung they freeze it and then they draw the fluid out um, and that's like every three weeks or or week or two weeks or whenever I'm having trouble like a lot of trouble breathing so um, luckily when I came back from vacation it wasn't that bad so um, just trying to hold out a little bit uh, so probably in about a week and a half I'll have to make that call and um, decide if I want a more permanent situation because if I don't the risk is that my lung will stop inflating properly um, so they don't really want to do too many more of these procedures I've had four I believe so um, yeah th again that's my update uh, just try to keep it real with you guys that you know what's really going on the good the bad the ugly um, thank you so much everybody who sends their love and support and 
and healing and you know ideas and everybody that um, you know has been through there for me throughout my journey uh, I love y'all peace and love